I'm Mike, and in this episode, obesogens, the toxins and other compounds that make you gain weight regardless of how many calories you're actually eating. We're going to look at how most obesogens are actually found in the diet, we're going to look at studies that show how these toxins make you obese, and we're going to look at one simple step you can take to dodge virtually all obesogens. In the US, we commonly believe that weight gain is only a calorie problem. It's from eating too many calories and not exercising enough. But take a look at these two charts. Here is a US calorie consumption chart compared to a weight gain chart. Look at 2000 to 2010. There's a clear flatlining and even decrease in caloric consumption, but weight continues to rise. I'm not trying to dismiss the role of calories in weight gain. But the role of toxins is undeniable. Since you can't legally inject people with toxins in a feeding study, let's look to the results of this rat study instead. They divvied the rats into two groups. One was a control group, and another, they fed the same exact amount of calories, but added toxins. In six months, the toxic rats had gained 36% more body fat than the control rats. The toxic rats were 20% heavier. And what does that look like on a human? That's the difference between high normal BMI and being obese. I know what you're thinking, that study was just rats, but what about humans? Is there any evidence that humans are getting fat solely from toxins? The answer, babies, obese babies. The Harvard School of Public Health found that the rate of obese infants under the age of six months old has increased by 73% since 1980. These babies are still being breastfed, they are not overeating, and they are not under-exercising and missing the gym or anything like that, but newborn babies now have 287 chemicals in their umbilical cord blood, three quarters of which are toxic. Yes, these are environmental toxins, but most of them are not coming from our air or our water or exhaust. They are coming from our food. When looking at persistent organic pollutants like dioxin, 95% come from animal fat. Industrial pollutants bioaccumulate up the food chain, so if you're eating on the top of the food chain, you're gonna get the worst of it. And to reinforce the whole toxic chubby baby idea with this study, if you give the toxin tributyltin to pregnant mice, their offspring are fatter than those who were not exposed. That's because tributyltin triggers the generation of new fat cells and fattens existing ones. And tributyltin, of course, is found bioaccumulating in seafood. But what's the mechanism that these toxins actually make us fat? Well, most known obesogens are endocrine disruptors, and endocrine disruptors mimic estrogen and screw with our lipid metabolism or fat metabolism. There's a reason that cattle grow 10 to 20% faster when you give them estrogen, because estrogen and weight are intimately linked. In fact, mammal estrogens might be one of the most underappreciated obesogens. And where do we get it? Well, 60 to 80 percent of our dietary estrogen comes from milk. And meat is worth noting too from this USDA report. About 90 percent of feedlot cattle are given estrogen implants. Between all of this estrogen, the TBT in seafood, and all of the organic pollutants that we get from animal fat, it's pretty clear where we're getting most of our obesogens, and that is animal products. Which brings me to that one step you can take to prevent most obesogens from entering your body, and that is to simply not eat animal fat. And that would be a pretty bold claim if there wasn't any evidence to back it up, but when we look at people who don't eat any animal fat, also known as vegans, they happen to be the only group of people in the normal BMI range, the only people that are not overweight. But healthy vegan people love to exercise. Nope. From this study, which divided people into two groups, one group that kept eating the way they normally did and did vigorous exercise for an hour every day, and another second group that just went vegan and did some light exercise like walking. 14 years later, the vigorous exercise animal product eating group was still overweight, while the lightly walking vegans achieved ideal body weight. And no, it's not from starving either. Those who are put on an ad libitum, aka eat as much as you want, whole food vegan diet, still saw weight loss. And one final thing you can do to eliminate even more toxins from your diet is eat organic. Here is pesticides in your pee before and after going organic. Pretty convincing. 
In conclusion, toxins are a very important factor in obesity. You can make rats gain 36% more fat just by giving them toxins. And then, don't forget those obese, toxic babies and the rat studies that backed that up. And because animal products are the main source of these toxins and obesogens, you can eat as much as you want on a whole food, plant-based diet and lose weight and go back down to ideal weight. And very importantly, this gives people an option to not starve themselves with calorie restriction diets that fuel eating disorders or low carb diets, which are not shown to sustain weight loss past a year. So if you know anybody that is struggling to lose weight and is trying to restrict calories without any results, perhaps showing this will shed some light on the subject. Thank you. Very important factor in obesity. We can make a...